dose. The Watergate Scandal. In 1972, when Richard Milhouse Nixon began campaigning for a second term in office, Americans were politically divided over the Vietnam War, leading Nixon's advisors to employ aggressive and quite illegal campaigning techniques, which saw members of Nixon's Committee to Re-elect the President, known derisively as Creep, to break into the Democratic National Committee's headquarters in the Watergate office complex in Washington, D.C., bugging phone lines and copying top-secret documents in an effort to gain an upper hand on their political rivals. When the wiretaps began to fail, however, on June 17th of that same year, five burglars were caught red-handed as they prepared for a second break-in, leading detectives to find evidence on the men, including a phone number to an office in the White House. People have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Over the next two years, the truth would be revealed through the efforts of a Senate investigating committee led by trial judge John Sirica and an independent special prosecutor named Archibald Cox, along with two investigative reporters from the Washington Post named Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. Aided by an anonymous whistleblower codenamed Deep Throat, later revealed in 2005 to be Mark Felt, a former associate director at the FBI, Woodward and Bernstein exposed hush money payments to seven burglars linked directly to the White House, as well as Nixon's push to have the CIA impede investigative efforts by the FBI. When White House counsel John Dean testified before the Senate's investigative committee about Nixon's insistence on taping all conversations to and from the Oval Office, lawmakers began a full-court press demanding that Nixon hand over all tapes in question. In what became known as the Saturday Night Massacre, when Cox refused to back down on his demands, on October 20th, 1973, Nixon ordered his firing, which in turn led several Justice Department officials to resign in protest. Matters worsened in March the following year, when a special grand jury indicted seven former aides to the president, followed by a July order by the Supreme Court demanding that Nixon hand over all his tapes. And when Nixon dragged his feet on the matter, the House Judiciary Committee voted to impeach the president on charges of obstruction of justice, abuse of power, as well as criminal violations to the Constitution. Cornered and out of options, Nixon released the tapes on August 5, 1974, which exposed irrefutable evidence of his complicity. Three days later, Nixon would become the first sitting American president to resign from office. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. A day later, Nixon would leave Washington for his adopted city of San Clemente, California, living quietly and largely out of the public's eye until his death on April 22, 1994, making the Watergate scandal a Shakespearean tragedy come to life. And there you have it, the Watergate scandal, today on The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, Share the link with a friend or colleague so that they too can learn something new every day.